Hello, I'm Andrew Pilevsky, and welcome to Focal Point. Today I'm here with State Senator Marty Sandoval, and uh, we're going to talk to Senator Sandoval about pension reform, new bills being passed, and uh, some transportation in Illinois. But first I want to ask you, uh, how did you get to where you are today? Well, Andrew, first thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I know you're widely viewed in Riverside, so I thought as the new year starts and I start my new term representing the people of Riverside, mm -hmm. that I want to come and be on your show. Yeah. So I want to thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming on the show. And I think um, in the long, to make it a, a short story, I've been in government for over 30 years. Public service has been my career. I uh, was born on the southwest side of Chicago. My parents immigrated from Mexico and uh, landed on Plymouth Rock, back of the yards, on the southwest side of Chicago. And they, like all uh, past immigrant groups, the Irish and the Polish and the Lithuanian, decided to educate their children. And, uh, and uh, hopefully many of them would uh, uh, live the American dream. And uh, I've been fortunate. My parents uh, uh, worked very hard to send us to Catholic schools. Uh, back then, that was important. And so um, I... Uh, graduated from uh, Quigley Seminary South mm -hmm. on the southwest side of Chicago. Thought as a young man wanted to serve community, uh, thought maybe a priesthood would be an option, a vocation, and I actually spent nine years in seminary. Um, the Lord didn't lead me to the pulpit, but he led me to the next best thing, and that was public service. So there and thereafter, for 30 years, I've been in uh, uh, public service, 15 years working in the federal government, uh, as a civil servant, uh, a number of years at the Department of Defense during the Reagan years, then went on to uh, serve at the Department of Veterans Affairs at Heinz Hospital, just down the street from here, mm -hmm. uh, during the Bush years, and then uh, served at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency during the Clinton-Gore years. Uh, that led uh, me to elected office, where I was appointed uh, commissioner of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, um, and then I uh, ran and got elected for that same office. So I served four years as commissioner of the MWRD, okay. plant very close to us here on yeah. 39th and Central. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 10 years ago, I, I was encouraged to run for a, a new seat in the Illinois Senate, uh, which included uh, the western suburbs of Cicero, Brew, and Stickney, as well as parts of the southwest side. I ran and I won and... It's been uh, a decade now of uh, being in the Illinois Senate. So mm -hmm. 15 years federal, 15 years uh, as elected uh, official. And so I'm celebrating nearly 30 years of, uh, of public service. And I'm very grateful and honored to be uh, where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, all that uh, very important shaping how you are today and uh, what type of decisions you make uh, as a legislature. Well, you know, I think my fundamental back, back, uh uh, fundamentally, I'm, uh, values are seated in community, mm -hmm. and I think uh, seminary and working in community. I was a park advocate also uh, some 15 years ago. I led a movement to build uh, schools and parks on the southwest side of Chicago, taking abandoned railroad yards and land in the lots and turning them into reuse. And uh, there was this one project that I was very proud of that really uh, got me discovered was uh, uh, which is today named the Sandoval School on the southwest side of Chicago. I, I had the, uh, this desire to turn an abandoned railroad yard, a 15-acre lot uh, land, and build schools and build parks to keep people off the streets and provide them a classroom in their neighborhoods. And I was successful in convincing then Mayor Daley to invest $40 million and turn that abandoned railroad yard into what is today the first school park campus ever designed and built in Chicago. It's named after my late sister, Socorro Sandoval, better known as the Sandoval School. And it's on 55th in St. Louis near Midway. And it, sta it stands tribute to teachers. Um, mm -hmm. She was a school teacher in the Chicago Public School System. She was killed in a tragic car accident while the campus was being built. And so therefore the mayor then felt that uh, uh, my family, vis-a-vis uh, -vis my work in community and my, my sister's commitment to education in the community, that the campus should be named after her. Yeah. That led to, to uh, uh, running for the Senate. M bottom line is that community service has been essential and has provided me the perspective as a legislator on uh, how I make my decisions. 
and that's a great legacy for her to have. Uh, the State Journal Register in Springfield, Illinois, reported on January 13th that the $96 billion state unfunded pension liability will grow by May of 2013. And uh, if the Illinois General Assembly does not pass pension reform, how do you think the situation will impact Illinois taxpayers? Well, it has a significant impact on the delivery of services for all the constituencies in the state, including the people of Riverside. Um, the pension liability will even grow another nearly $2 billion in this next fiscal year if something isn't done. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of reasons why we're in the situation where we are today. It's not good to look f backwards. It's good to look forward and find a solution. Mm -hmm. It does us no good to continue to point fingers. Most of the folks that were around uh, when um, the, 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 the increasing pension liability started becoming a major issue are no longer around, so it's up to some of us to, to uh, find solution. Look, when those pension liabilities and obligations to those who have served in state government and now are retired uh, continue to be a burden on state government, the state government has to find a way to, to fund those pensions. And um, there's no other place to look for it sometimes but then to look for uh, revenues that are coming from local governments. Mm -hmm. The local governments uh, pay sales tax and they pay a number of other fees and taxes. And, uh, you know, when uh, people are, the governor and the legislature is looking around to see uh, what are some of the more solvent uh, uh, pots of money, um, you know, it, it's unfortunately been that sometimes they've gone into the local government share. Uh, so every time that, you know, money is swept out of the local government share mm -hmm. for services for police and fire and roads in Riverside, uh, it has a direct impact on people. Yeah, and uh, as a follow-up question, how do you think this will impact not just people but the local government here in Riverside or other parts of your district? Well, I've recently just been appointed, been announced that I'm the vice chairman of the Committee on Local Government in the Illinois Senate. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, a committee that uh, I had as an assignment when I was a freshman senator. Uh, I think it comes at an opportune time to defend local governments. We need, to, local governments need every dollar that uh, they receive today, and we should not be rating the local government fund uh, during this juncture, this period in time, uh, in order to uh, pay off all our other obligations. Mm -hmm. You know, these services are critical, like to the people of Riverside, and uh, they're hard earned, and if they don't, receive their fair share, mm -hmm. then they will have to borrow money. And because the credit ratings are uh, where they're at today, it will cost more money to pay them back. And uh, eventually, uh, the local officials will have to raise taxes. That's not acceptable. Yeah. And uh, we'll be right back with more Focal Point after these messages. Hello, and welcome back to Focal Point. I'm Andrew Pileski, here with Senator Marty Sandoval from the 11th District in Illinois. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, transportation and the fiscal year 2013 budget fact sheet for the Illinois Department of Transportation uh, reports a budget of $2.6 billion. Do you think that level of funding is adequate to meet the transportation needs in Illinois? Uh, no, far from that, Andrew. You know, I just want to go back just a bit. Um, I became the chairman of the Senate Transportation Committee mm -hmm. just four years ago. Uh, President Cullerton appointed me chairman of that committee, and it's a very big responsibility uh, and one that I take real seriously because uh, the western suburbs and the southwest quarter, this area near around Riverside, is an important area for major investment in infrastructure, especially uh, because we have so much rail and highway in and around us. And so um, one of my first responsibilities was to pass a capital bill. For 10 years during the Blagojevich administrations and prior to that, there had been no, uh, we had not been successful in trying to pass a major infrastructure bill uh, that would improve our roads, our bridges, our schools, and our highways. Well, that was my first assignment. And I was fortunate enough uh, in my first year as chairman to get that done and to mm -hmm. put uh, at a critical time in history, um, uh, during the, the, the toughest recession uh, downturn that we've just uh, mm -hmm. have witnessed 
to get people back to work as well as improve our infrastructure. So I'm real proud of that. It was a $33 billion capital program that has, uh, that this region has uh, reaped in benefits. Uh, I'll point to a couple uh, uh, areas like our bridges. If you look at the, the Central Avenue bridge off I-55, um, you look at the bridge on 31st in Cicero. If you look at the underpasses underneath uh, Cicero Road, Harlem, there have been major repavements of many of our, uh, of our thoroughfares as well as our bridges. In fact, all bridges that lead into Cicero, which is the district I've represented for the last 10 years, have been repaired, all bridges. And so we have made major improvements to much of our infrastructure. I got the question the other day from a, a resident in Riverside, what's going on? And I thought, well, here comes the question. The answer was, wow, everything is, you know, roads are getting paved, our bridges mm -hmm. are getting fixed, our, our schools are getting uh, uh, rehabbed, some of them. And so I was just real proud to say that, uh, that uh, at least someone thought that some of us were doing a decent job. So uh, I think that the transportation fund, the road fund, they call it, is uh, insufficient for all the needs that we have. We have to invest in our uh, passenger rail system, uh, Metra, it needs to continue to be a viable solution at a very cost effective to the residents. Uh, so we always continue to have to make investments into the, our Metro line, uh, into the CTA line. It, in order for a viable economy, we need to move, be able to move people around. And our uh, transportation system is like a utility. It costs hundreds of millions of dollars to keep and maintain these systems operating and well. At only a, a small share of the uh, 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 charge that is paid for to the residents, it goes towards infrastructure. So, uh, you know, those are big, major projects. And so, uh, and our highways um, depend upon largely the road funds. So, um, as you know, as you drive around the area, you'll continue to see potholes and, you know, mm -hmm. areas that need some yeah. improvement. So, uh, there's never enough, but we're doing the best we can without raising the gas tax mm -hmm. of the road fund. Okay, yeah, and, and that's important uh, to keep you know, gas taxes low, keep um, people sure. happy. Uh, just staying on the topic of transportation, yet, just yesterday, Governor Quinn signed into law a bill allowing undocumented immigrants to get special driver's licenses. Can you comment on the importance of this legislation to Illinois residents? It was an important piece of legislation that's been on the books for uh, 14 years. Senator Miguel de la Valle, was the introducer of that bill some 14 years ago. He's no longer in the Senate, but that tells you how far back people have been, my fellow colleagues have been trying to pass this piece of legislation. My hat's off to President John Cullerton, mm -hmm. who was a sponsor of the bill in the Senate. He has the, been the chief proponent of highway and public safety over the last 30 some years at, in the Senate. And it would only appropriate that he decided that this was a bill that was going to save lives. As you know, uh, people are here uh, undocumented, without documents, and so they've been not been able to have access to getting a driver's license. That has put uh, our residents in harm's way. When people don't have driver's license, that means they haven't taken a road test, they haven't taken a written test, they haven't had a vision test, and you know they don't have insurance. We are putting uh, children, families, seniors in harm's way by allowing these residents to drive without, you know, having the proper license. And so the motivation was, let's get them licensed so that we can make our highways and roads a lot safer. Mm -hmm. It's a very common sense approach. Uh, and I think this is a bill that's going to save lives in Illinois. Uh, many folks, it's a controversial bill. Yeah, made, many made folks national news. Made national news. People will... Um, uh, will debate that bill for years. I, on the floor of the Senate, uh, uh, made remarks that, that there was no need for this bill, uh, although I thought that it was a good public safety bill, but I would rather have Congress vote on immigration reform uh, and work on a path for citizenship for all of the undocumented residents, because if they did their job, we would not have a need for a bill like this. But because Washington is broken and they cannot get the job done, whether fiscally 
or bring in the, bringing in more transportation funds or bringing in more education funds mm -hmm. or simply passing immigration reform, we at the state level have taken action. It, it was uh, inevitable that we uh, needed to do something about uh, drivers that uh, are driving without uh, a driver's licenses and without insurance. You know, Andrew, what would you, what happens on the road today when, uh, uh, you know, someone gets hit and, you know, the driver is undocumented? What, what's that person going to do? Probably just drive off. He's going to take off. They don't have insurance. Guess, He's going to yeah. take off. And that's what happens every day on the roads of Illinois. Um, that situation is going to happen significantly less now that people will have the opportunity to get a driver's license, have insurance, and uh, uh, save a few lives. Um, and that's very important. Hopefully sets a precedence for other states around the U.S. There are other states that have driver's licenses for undocumented mm -hmm. residents. Again, the driver's license is a temporary driver's license yes. uh, that is renewable every three years. Let's hope that the U.S. Congress in this year finally gets around to working in a bipartisan way, like mm -hmm. we did here at the state level, and pass immigration reform. Sure, and in, in closing, uh, what do you hope to accomplish in the coming years as a member of the Illinois Senate? Well, I'm excited to uh, be celebrating 10 years of service as the Illinois Senator. I've represented probably the folks on the southwest side of Chicago and Cicero, Berwyn, and Stickney. There's a, you know, a lot that I can point to, and maybe uh, uh, because I haven't had an opponent in a while, maybe that's an affirmation of the work I've done. In my new district that I was sworn into office on January 9th, it includes a large portion of Riverside. I look forward to continue doing the work I have done for the last 10 years for my old district, for my new district that includes Riverside. And we've already have shown uh, some progress even before uh, taking on the new assignment. Uh, all summer long, I worked with President Gorman uh, and state government on the Hoffman Dam project. Mm -hmm. It's a successful project. It's brought state dollars and uh, federal monies to bear to improve our, our water system uh, and our ecosystem here in this region. And I worked with President Gorman on trying to bring uh, a couple million dollars to improve the train station here in Riverside. Look forward to a response mm -hmm. uh, to getting that done real soon. Thanks for being on the show. And I'm Andrew Pulevsky. Thank you for watching Focal Point.